again from Fabulous Paper Emporium. I've got not just your regular tuxedo card. It is a tuxedo card, but the reason why I've chosen various shades of blue is because it's a Canadian tuxedo card. And if you don't know what a tux Canadian tuxedo is, it's the denim on denim on denim, like infinite denim. So denim pants, denim shirt, denim sh uh, jacket. That is the Canadian tuxedo. So <laughs> that is why I've chosen to do various shades of blue. We have the dark blue base with uh, all of the um, accessories <laughs> all done in dark blue with a light blue on the inside and for the accent on the collar. So anyways, this could obviously be done with any color uh, for for a lot of different occasions. Um, it can be a little bit difficult to uh, make cards for, you know, men because there are, excuse me, not a lot of stamp sets out there. So um, generally we have to get a little bit more creative. So Canadian tuxedo card. That is what we're doing today. And we will be doing some stamping using our Misty, which I'm loving. And we're going to use one of two, a couple of stamps. I'm, I still haven't quite figured this out. Because it's Canadian, I have chosen, um, I pulled out two of the O Canada 2 stamp collections. The one with the moose, which I think is what I'm leaning towards doing the, you know, I moose you a lot and uh putting that there although you know the the uh little beaver with the o puck kind of is funny as well so i'll be thinking about that whilst making this card <clears throat> so to go over the pieces that you are going to need to make this beautiful canadian tuxedo card you will need to start off with you will need a base piece that is cut eight and a half by five and a half. We will be scoring this together in a bit. We will also need two panels of a coordinating color. So I've done a light blue. So these two pieces are one and three quarters by five and a quarter. And again, you'll need two of those. You will need this piece, which is cut at four by five and a quarter. This will be for your inside panel. And then you're going to need some smaller pieces. So we've got two ovals and these ovals measure one and three quarters in width, I guess, uh, by at the highest point along here, the middle point is seven eighths. So that's roughly, you don't want to go any larger than that. So if you have an oval punch that is around that, that would be great. If not, you could always take scissors once you've cut it and we've curled it. You could always take scissors to kind of, you know, um, adjust the sizing. So there's two of those for our bow tie. I've also got two little, I don't even know how big these are. They are... Uh, pro I would say about three eighths of an inch. So three eighths of an inch, a uh, half inch, you know, if you've got a circle punch that fits the bill, by all means, those are going to be our buttons. Uh, you could always use real buttons too, I suppose, if you have them hanging around. Um, all the buttons that I have are attached to clothes, so I'm <laughs> not going to go there right now. Um, you will also need two of these rectangular strips and these are cut at three eighths of an inch three eighths of an inch by one and a half inch you'll need one for the pocket so there's a little pocket here and then i used one for this middle piece of the bow tie and then i have a scrap piece of paper because the bow tie i build it on a scrap piece of paper so to add some stability but also because the parts are not well, they are all glued together, but you'll see once we get to that point. So <clears throat> those are all of our pieces. We will get to doing some scoring right now. So I'll set these aside. Hopefully won't lose them. Here, 
I'll leave them on the light shade and that way the light cardstock and this way hopefully I won't miss I won't misplace them okay so I'll set this other main card aside so if you get out your scoreboard your paper trimmer what have you we are going to score this at two and an eighth because we're basically making a gatefold card and then six and three eighths right so we've made gatefold cards before well, i think i've made one or two um and then so this is basically a gatefold we've just made it extra fancy by giving it a collar and you know all the rest of that stuff okie dokie so we will need our scoreboards again so i'm just going to set mine off to the side and hopefully it doesn't fall down um so what we are going to do now is we're going to make our little marks for the uh, extra folds that we're going to need to do to make the collar so because i just want to make sure that everything lines up as it should and it does you just want to make sure before doing anything extra as you fold in your sides i just like to make sure that they meet up in the middle as close as possible you know without leaving huge gaps so you're just going to want to do that first and then we're going to open up our card again and what i'm going to do is flip this over um and do, do, do. actually i don't think i need to flip it over i'm just gonna think for a second so that folds over this way and then that side to be down okay so yeah so fold it flip it over i just it's just the way that i prefer to do the scoring and we are going to measure across the top so you're going to go one inch from the outside in so there's my one inch mark i'm just going to mark that off here and then do the same thing on the other flap so again measuring one inch in i'm going black on dark blue so hopefully i can see that when it comes to scoring and then on the side i'm going to be marking this down the edge hopefully that's in screen that's in uh in frame so from the top down you're going to go three and a half inches so three and a half inches and again doing the same thing on the other side we go three and a half inches down so this is going to make our collar right so we're going to score we're going to attach those two so again just with my ruler and a score tool you can use your bone folder too i do like these score tools though they uh they get some nice score marks so i'm going to line my ball up with my top score mark along the top and then just make sure it meets up with my bottom score mark and it just shifted there we go okay so we're going to attach the one inch to the three and a half inch i'm not exerting a lot of pressure this which is why i go over it more than once okay and then we're going to repeat the exact same thing on the other side so i just make sure everything is lined up and we're going to connect those two Again, not exerting a lot of pressure. I don't want to go through the cardstock. That has happened before. <laughs> so we've got our beautiful score marks. Now we're going to bring in our two pieces. These are the one and a half, what, sorry, one and three quarters by five and a quarter. And we're just going to lay these on top. And we're going to mark these ones now. I'm just going to switch this turn this around so i can see it better so we want to center this as best we can we're not adhering it just yet so here's where the top score mark is and then the bottom comes out right here 
So I'm making these score, same score marks on the pale card stock because it's going to need to fold as well to create the, you know, super fancy lapel. I guess it's a lapel, not a collar. I don't know why I called it a collar before. It's not a shirt. It's a tuxedo. Okay, so we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. And so I've got this score mark right up here. Just need a little mark. And then the other score mark comes about right, comes out right about there. Okay, so we'll set the base aside and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we're connecting our two little check marks. Grab my score tool. Okay, make sure they line up. And go over it a few times. Okay, and you're gonna do the exact same thing to this one. I'm gonna flip it upside down, it's easier. This way, swing that over, make sure it connects. There we go. Okay, so now we bring back our base and now we're going to be adhering our the uh, light blue to our base. So we'll get our liquid glue, make sure I've got this the right sides. <clears throat> so hopefully everybody had a great Christmas. If you don't celebrate, hopefully you've had some time off to relax and recharge and are ready for New Year's coming up. certainly been a busy Christmas that is for sure for no other reason than you know we foolishly decided to do that reno <laughs> sorry I've got to lift this card to make sure that I've got it all lined up properly okay I think that's as good as it's gonna get on that side and then I've got to do that side all right, I had entertained doing the black and, and like a buffalo plaid, but I think, you know, prior to Christmas, I have done quite a, a lot of plaid. So um, I've moved away from that for just a second. I'm sure I will find some beautiful Easter plaids <laughs> to start working with. <laughs> Um, I've also been working on an album and um, I don't know if any of you are interested in, you know, creating albums, but if you are, certainly let me know. I can do a tutorial. I did a tutorial on a folio, a trifold folio, and now I've got a couple of albums that I've been working on. Um, hopefully I'll be done hopefully in the next couple of days and uh, I'll show that to you I'll do a quick video on that and uh, show it to you and if you're interested in learning how to make an album then we can certainly go through the steps okay so now that our panels are nicely adhered we are going to now have to coax both layers into folding which can be can be a bit tricky because again you're doing two layers of cardstock so that's one and then this is the second sometimes having your bone folder gives you you know a little bit of help and assistance getting that that crease down all right so here we go there we go. So we have both of our lapels nicely done. Now, if you notice, they kind of stick up a little bit. So you will need to grab a couple of, of foam squares or foam dots or whatever you have handy. Doesn't take a lot, two on each side. Peel the backings off and that way they lay a little bit more flat but they do give a little bit of dimension because 
well, I don't think they ever lay perfectly flat. So, oops, backing came right off of that one. All right. So isn't that looking super fancy already? Love it. Okay, I'm gonna work on the bow next. So I'm gonna set that aside. We're gonna grab our two ovals, <coughs> excuse me, and one of our strips that are three eighths by one and a half. And I'm also gonna bring in my spare scrap. I haven't measured it, but I feel like that's obviously too long. So I'll give you a measurement just as soon as we're done. So with the ovals, you don't want to, you don't want to end up folding them. So we're going to take our bone folder and just kind of curl them a bit. That's breaking the fibers in the paper and just giving it that natural curl. So we're going to do that with both of our ovals. <clears throat> and I'm just taking my bone folder. You can use the edge of your table if you so wish. And then I'm going to connect the two ends that have now met. Okay, so you're going to end up with something like this. Let's grab my liquid glue. Just a little dab of glue may look like a lot, but it's not. Just press your fingers for a little bit and make sure that you've got some good adhesion. And then we're gonna do that to the exact same thing to the other oval. Okay, if only, if only I could. There we go. Alrighty. So when we have these two done, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so these two are gonna be placed on our scrap piece. So obviously it is way too big. So I'm gonna line that up a little bit and grab my scissors. And then I don't want it to be the length, the total length. So I'm just going to go in about halfway from the edge of where that rounded the end of the bow ends and just kind of do a piece about that big. doesn't even need to be that wide. So cutting this really in a paper trimmer, it, it, it would be exceedingly difficult because it's very small. So if you have a scrap piece, I would just cut here. I'll give you the measurement in just a second. So this is about three eighths inches by one. So three eighths inch wide by about one inch. So if you wanted to cut this a little bit longer, you could always cut it and then, you know, trim it off or, you know, so I guess it's not, not terrible to, to, uh, make that. And so all I did was put on some liquid glue and then I'm going to move these pieces. So basically the, the two ends, my two ovals that are now my, going to be my bow tie are not overlapping. They just come to together. So the two ends are butted up right against each other to create that. And then this piece just goes in the middle to kind of finish it off. Okay, and you can do the same thing. I'm not, it doesn't really need to be curled, but you will need to fold it over. So I'm just giving this a second to dry. Make sure that that's all good, which it seems to be. And then we're gonna place this right in the middle and then we're going to fold it over so that it meets in the back. And that's where we're going to add a little bit of glue. So keep that open. A little bit of glue there. And then close that. Just keep my fingers pressed on there for a minute. Let the glue start to dry. 
and voila, you have your bow tie. Perfect. So now, what, now that we have our bow tie done, I want to do some stamping. So I'm going to get my Misty out and this pale blue that we've done for the inside. Now, because this is open, hopefully I'll be able to get this. Do I need to leave that in? Yes, I do. Okay. Sorry. Just trying to get this all kind of figured out. So I'm going to take my magnet, set that off to the side. And I'm using the Misty again just to be safe because, you know, sometimes you're stamping, maybe you're in a hurry or what have you. Always worthwhile to get your Misty out because if you're like me, sometimes you are not as good at getting that all that coverage on the stamp. And, you know, then... You've got like a half stamped image and your cardstock is wasted. So I'm going to put my magnet on here and I think my mousse will go right at the bottom here. And that way, hopefully the V, I'm not, you know, getting that in there. I might have a little bit of the antler, but big deal. I like it. I want to use the mousse. Okay. So you lower your Misty, the, the, the top part to pick up your, see now this is a very, very, obviously you saw me take the stamp right out of the, right out of the package. So it is very new. So now that I have my image or my stamp, I'm going to swing this around. See, so hopefully you can see the entire thing. I'm going to get some black ink on here. Lower that. That way I can really press and get the image inked up nice and good. Okie dokie. So let's give this a go. So I fold the misty. I'm going to press on this and make sure I'd have hopefully some really good contact. And I'm also hoping that, mm, that my paper doesn't come up. Oh, there we go. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yep. Perfect. That stamped out so amazingly well. I'm really happy with that. So we're good with that one. I'm going to take my mousse off and I'm going to switch that up. And I'm going to place, and I, I could have done all of this all at the same time. And it was really, you know, remiss of me for to, to, to forget that, that I can always do this, making sure that this is on the right. I'm going to put that one, nope, that one right here. Okay. And then I think I'm going to put... A little maple leaf up here at the top just to show you that I, we can do two stamps we can do multiple stamps all at the same time again close it to pick those up oh come on these are brand new stamps they need to be seasoned <laughs> once you start using them they get less and less sticky so do not worry get both of those stamps inked up and we'll get those pressed down. I think we're good. This comes in handy. I'm just going to lift that. This comes in, your Misty comes in super handy. If you've got the um, stamps with a lot of layers. So a lot of the floral stamps will have maybe the outline on one stamp. Then on another stamp, it'll be uh, kind of the filler and then some shading. This works amazingly well for that because you can keep your paper in the same spot. You lay your stamp down on your paper to, to so that you can fiddle around with where it needs to go. And then when you're ready to stamp, you ink it up with, you know, whatever color you want and you're done. 
So that is the Misty again. So that's what I end up with. Beautiful inside with my sentiment. And then I'm going to bring this back in so we can lay this part down. And eh, it shows up a little bit. That's okay. That's fine. I'm good with it. But of course, if you wanted to, you could always put this in if you weren't sure that you wanted anything to show up on the outside. You fold in your two gatefold panels and you just lightly with a pencil mark where is going to be visible. And I could have moved that, <coughs> excuse me, I could have moved that over a little bit so that you actually saw the sentiment right there. But I didn't think of it. So <laughs> it is what it is. So now I'm just going to, this has been sitting, I'm at the end of, end of my bottle of glue. Time for a refill. And that's probably one thing that we will be carrying in the spring. Of course, if you use art glitter and you're from the, you know, a colder climate, whether it's colder province or state, you know that they do not ship in the winter months because it does not do well once it's been, uh, once it's frozen. So something to note. And now we're going to put on our bow tie. So you can just put a little bit of glue on this and on the two sides anywhere where it's going to be touching and I'm going to fold these pieces in and get that as centered as I possibly can push that down a bit make sure I've got good contact and now we can do our buttons so we've got our two three eighths of an inch um, circles We've got our little pocket. We're going to put all of this up on our foam squares. For the circles, because I do want to position them very close to the gatefold, and I don't want to obviously put the, the buttons I need to cover the gatefold panel, but here's what I'm trying to say. So... I cut one of my dimensional foam things in half and I'm going to apply it to one side of the button. And the reason for that is you don't want to obviously adhere this closed. You want to keep your gatefold from adhering. So I've got one half covered. I'm going to flip that over and the half that is got the foam square is going to be on the right side, thus allowing it to, it overlaps a little bit, but it doesn't obviously keep it shut. And I'm going to do, I'm going to collect my other half ish. I can never get these cut in half perfectly. So, but it's okay. Okay, that's having a hard time getting the backing off. There we go. Nope, there we go. <laughs> Alrighty, and then we have our second button. Wait, running away. There, those are lined up pretty well. And now we're gonna put on our little pocket detail grab a couple more of our foam things. These ones, like I think I've said this before, these ones are nice because they're not super, uh, super high in the sense that they lay pretty close to your base, but um, still give a little bit of dimension. And there we have it. So we have our Canadian tuxedo cards, our blue on blue on blue. And 
that's 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 about it <laughs> so so hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you uh like it and that way i know that you've liked it and want to see more tutorials from me so um like don't forget to hit subscribe so again we have this giveaway we're very close we're getting well okay we're getting closer we're about 27 subscriptions away from giving that beautiful let it snow uh kit away from the graphic 45 collection if you haven't seen it click on the video to the left and that will show you everything that's included with the kit that we're giving away if you have any questions or comments, leave those below and we'll get to them as quickly as we possibly can. Hopefully I'll be back tomorrow with another video and that's great. If you are, like I said, if you're interested in learning how to do and make your own albums, I'll show you really quickly since I've got just the base done. So all of this you can make. It's chipboard, it's paper. That is it. So if you're interested in learning how to make uh, an album, and obviously I'm missing the inserts right now, but um, that's because I'm still in the decorating phase. <laughs> so as soon as that's done, I will come back and show you. Um, I think I have one, actually. Give me one second. I've got one here. If I dig it out. Sorry, I'm going to move these away. So this is another album that I've been working on slowly but surely and this has the pages inside. So these are the pages that I have done. Obviously you see lots of glue. We had, I had a fight with my glue that day. So um, these are obviously not decorated but these are the pages that I've done for the inside. So like I said, if you're interested in learning how to make this and I will show you the final products once I'm done. Um, do let me know. Give me give me a quick comment below. Let me know if you're interested in learning how to make them. And I will absolutely put together a tutorial for you. In the meantime, hopefully you have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you next time. Bye!